Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. I'm Richard and welcome back to Caffeine and Machine. Standard practice here at Caffeine and Machine, we've got a very eclectic series of cars. We've got a Ferrari 308, here we've got a McLaren 570. Uh, behind us we have a beautiful MG that looks like it's been beautifully renovated. A Mercedes with a cool number plate on it that has that on there, I can relate to that one. We've got a Nissan absolutely slammed on its suspension. You know what I think about that from a previous video. And as we move across here, what's this then? Uh, this, is, this looks like James's Scuderia, JM on cars. Looks like his Scuderia. Well, there's an inter interesting story that aligns with that. Today we've been helping JM on cars do some filming. My son is the videographer for our channel for Rich Reviews. Jacob has been helping with actually performing some video with James today, and I've been helping with the driving. So what have we been driving? So we've been, we've been driving and videoing two cars. 360 Challenge Spadali and the Ferrari Testarossa. Awesome cars. Because we helped James out, James kindly said that we could borrow his car for a few hours to perform a review on it. James is actually at the moment driving my Fiat Abarth 500 SS. Yes, that one that you've seen that's got 135,000 miles on it. And we've been fortunate enough to borrow James' car to do some video work and to do a review on the car. Thanks a lot, James, very kind of you. So what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna take the car to a nice shady area at Caffeine and Machine and we're gonna do a bit of a walk around. Apologies for the background noise, that's par for the course at Caffeine and Machine. So we take the car to a nice little secluded area here and we give you a general walk around of the car and its specification. So here we are with James Scuderia. It's a 4.3 litre V8, 502 brake horsepower with a top end just under 200 miles per hour, circa 198 miles per hour. This isn't my car and I don't know that much about Scudder ears. Um, so we're just going to do a quick walk around and give you an appreciation of the specification of this car. So as you can see, it's got the, the gold wheels. I know that James upgraded the colour of the wheels to gold to match in with the actual grey exterior body colour. Walking around the front, you've got the, the Scudder ear stripe, which runs the full length of the car. If you run your fingers across the stripe, it's actually above the base coat underneath the lacquer, which is quite important. That means the actual stripe is protected. This is quite a big thing with these body stripes for these cars. Some of the stripes, some of the earlier stripes were actually placed on top of the lacquer. And of course you could feel them and of course they'd peel off. So actually painted on stripes like this, where they're painted on top of the base coat with lacquer over the, with lacquer over the top of the stripe protects them. We've got a standard Scuderia shield, um, proper Scuderia shields, which, which is bizarrely an option. Thousand pounds on a 458 to put those Scuderia shields on. I assume it's approximately the same price on the Scuderia. Um, you've got the yellow calipers, which denotes, as we all know, carbon ceramic discs. You always have, well, spice, it's always a, a denoter that the yellow calipers align with carbon ceramic discs. I think that's actually in the Porsche world. Um, but commonly, yellow calipers are, are optioned on Ferraris when, when you have the carbon ceramics. It's just a, a common practice. Yes, red is often used as well, but, uh, um, but uh, it's more aligned with carbon ceramics to have yellow calipers. As we walk around the back of the car, you see some very interesting differences in the design queue. I really like the way how they've changed the rear, the rear end of the car. What would have been known previously as a, as a challenge grille. Obviously, this is a challenge, uh, well, it's, a, it's not a challenge car, it's a Scuderia car, but it's of the same vein as the Challenge Stradale. And you can see here the way they've separated and got the actual um, Ferrari badge, or Fer they actually got the Ferrari horse in the, in the centre um, pillar section, which is a good design, it's a nice design. The exhaust either side of the number plate and the, the rear diffuser quite substantial there again which is common practice with Ferraris, modern Ferraris nowadays. I don't know if you call this a modern Ferrari but obviously this helps a hell of a lot with with sucking the car down to the road. So with regards to the 430 4.3 litre engine the standard 430s don't have carbon fibre down the sides. The standard specification of a Scuderia has carbon fibre for the airboxes and side panels and also for the plenums. So for the plenum chambers they're carbon fibre as well where normally on the, on the 430, on the straight standard 430 you'd have the red plenum chambers with a crinkle red paint which is uh, very common on Ferraris. It's the same that my 458 has got. And you see here that the, the chassis of the car is with the steel tubular chassis which provides the strength very similar to the 360s and how they're designed in that way 
very open, um, very open in, in the manner how it actually shows the, the chassis, the tubular chassis of the car. And uh, the standard, the standard Scuderia exhaust is uh, quite substantial in its sound as well. James has already said that the exhaust on this system is very bassy in its tone and something that he's looking to change in the future. And I can understand that. Having today been very fortunate to drive and compare and contrast, uh, challenge Stradale. <laughs> A, a 360 Challenge Stradale, a Testrosa, would you believe it? And now the 430 Scuderia. The external colour of this car is grey, that's obvious. <laughs> I think it's called Grigio, something Grigio. I'm not absolutely sure, as I say, I'm not too well versed on, on the older types of, on the older models of Ferraris with the, the coloured options, the colour paint options that were available. If we look inside, James's car. As you can see, standard practice on the Scuderia, carbon fibre door cards, race seats. Now, with this Scuderia, I believe it was an option to have the harness. I don't know if it was standard or not. I don't think it was standard, but this has got the actual three-point harness instead of the inertia reel seat belts. And I can attest that they're a bit of a pain in the backside. Um, it is what it is. It's good to have them and it adds value to the car for sure but it's a pain in the backside getting in and out of them all the time. And of course, really to use them properly, you've got to have them pinned really tight. So you pin to the seat. Um, and that means that if you've left the door open, for example, and you've put, the, seat, you've put the, the harness on, you can't reach to the flipping doors. If you've got the harness on properly, you can't reach and open, and open the door. So then you've got to release yourself from the harness, struggle yourself out of it, and then go and close the door and then put the harness back on again. Now, one of the key things with the Challenge Stradale and with the Scuderia, is they're very stripped out, so they're very lightweight. There's not that much of an increase in the horsepower with regards to the, to the Scuderia and the straight 430. Um, but what, it, what you get in, in, um, in a, how you get the increase in performance is you have a lot more lightened car. So the car is a lot lighter than the standard 430. So you can see that the actual car doesn't even have any carpets here. It's very stripped out. You can actually see the bare welds. And uh, this unnerved a lot of people because they didn't necessarily want to be able to see the welds or they thought the welds would look a lot, um, a lot more, a lot better engineered than they actually are. Now, when I say engineered, I don't mean that they're weak in any way. It's just that the welds aren't pretty. I mean, if you look in the corner, say, for example, it, you know, it's, it's not how you'd like to see um, the internals of what was probably um, upwards of 180,000 pounds spec of a car. I know that this um, James has been quite open about how much he paid for this car. The, the purchase price of this car must have been close to 200 grand and it's quite interesting you pay that amount of money and you actually see the welds in the in the footwell but that's how it is you know that's you you have a car lightened part of the lightening process for the car and part of the actually provisioning and styling of these types of cars was to have no carpet and to be very stripped out. You could argue the point that, okay, if it's very stripped out, why does it still have air conditioning? But again, um, it, the air conditioning, I'm not sure if that was a base option that was standard. You could probably could have had the air conditioning removed from the car, which would, would have been called air conditioning delete. The bucket seats, these are the, the larger size bucket seats. When you're, specing, when you're specking the car, you could have different sizes in the bucket seats. I believe that there was three different sizes, and I believe that must have been small, medium, and large. I know that these are the larger size, and for me, quite broad across the shoulders, this certainly fits me very well. This, this seat certainly fit me very well. And I know James has stated the same, that they fit him very well as well. They're actually very, very comfortable. The only umbrage I take is to the harness. I'd rather have inertia reel. But to be honest, if I was specking the car from new, I would choose the harness because it's, it's a lot more expensive to change if you want to add it in afterwards and it adds value to the car. I believe you can add an inertia reel in addition to the to the three-point harness. You can just move the three-point harness to the back, probably tie it up, and have an inertia reel system um, to make it easier to get in and out of the car. It always has to be said, I guess, that the three-point harness probably could cause problems if you had a fire. <laughs> if it's harder to get out of the seat of the car, then obviously it means that it's going to impact you if there was a fire as well, but uh, maybe not best to think about something like that. With regards to the parking braking system, the 458 and above have an electronic parking brake. As you can see here, the Scuderia actually has the old style manual handbrake. So this is the last model to have the manual style handbrake. 
in the center console of this as standard you see the actual uh, center console console is in carbon fiber i believe it's the pinaferino badge in the center console there as well which um, looks looks actually really cool on top of the center console you also have for the first time in a ferrari it featured for the first time in the scuderia bumpy road mode good old bumpy road mode so it started with a scuderia you actually have a bumpy road button that you press and that softens up the shock absorbers um, and I know in the, in the 458 it works very very well and it's comparable to the Scuderia as well it, it's a very good option to have alongside the center console as well you have the reverse button to, to put the car into reverse and you have the auto so this car as well had an auto option whereas the the Challenge Stradale for example didn't have an auto option it was totally manual um, these are still single plate clutches but this is a more advanced version of a single plate clutch that was in the 360. The gear changes are a lot more fluent as you're pushing on so when i say pushing on upwards of around 6000 rpm when you're when you're changing gear you don't have to lift so much as you do in the stradale say for example or in the 360 it's more fluid so you, you change gear on the paddle you don't have to lift and it's more aggressive it changes a lot more quickly this really was the best incarnation that you could have that ferrari ever had on a single plate automated clutch system this was the best iteration 458 obviously has a dual clutch system previous to this the old were the older style single plate clutches which were very clunky this is a lot more fluid and was um you know a very good single plate clutch a very good iteration of the single plate clutch notwithstanding when you're in nose to tail traffic it's still a bit glitchy and still a bit juddery um, so you have to go careful um, it's always common practice with the single plate clutches when you're operating them as certainly when you're going lower speeds anyway you lift before you actually change gear to a higher gear um, with regards to this model you still have to lift when you're changing gear to a higher gear but when you um, when you're pressing on more you don't have to worry about that so much whereas in the challenge stradale you have to con you have to lift a little bit all the time so you don't put the wear in the clutch and also whenever you're at um, traffic lights whenever you're stopped because again it's a it's, an, it's a, a hydraulic version of a manual gearbox. The single plate gearboxes are automated hydraulic gearboxes. So they're the actual, there's a hydraulic system that operates and actuates the clutch, <coughs> but it is the same, but it is the same as the manual gearbox. So you have to be careful with the single plate clutch. You can wear them out. So if you hold on the clutch, then you can wear the, wear the clutch plates, the single clutch plates, unlike the later models from the 458 onwards that have DCTs, the dual clutch system. So the way how you stop from holding on the clutch is when you get to traffic lights, you put the car into neutral. It's important to do that so you're not constantly having friction on the clutch plate and on the pressure plate, the pressure plate pushes on the clutch plate and you make sure you haven't got friction on the, on the pressure plate, which is constantly wearing the clutch plate. Put it into neutral, you prevent that. Whereas the dual clutch systems do not have that situation. So you don't have to worry about that type of wear. Um, if I was to say the comparison within a dual clutch system and a single clutch plate system, it's night and day difference. The, the 458 is massively different in its, in its um, clutch system with regards to single plate clutch. But with regards to single plate clutch system, automated clutch system, this is very impressive. It is night and day difference to the Challenge Stradale, a lot more advanced. You can see that they clearly got the single plate clutch as advanced as they could in this model and then they moved on to the next advance, which is a dual clutch system. With regards to room, if we, if we lift the seats forward, you can see it's got, these seats are carbon fiber race seats and beautifully styled, very much like the 458 race seats with full carbon fiber back, a handle at the back that enables you to actually lift the seat forward, the back of the, back of the um, seat rest forward. We've got a little bit of room in the back, but you've got a nice little bit of shelf space there that you can put some bits and pieces. Here, James has got some umbrellas in there, etc. cetera. Um, and you've got, um, seal kick plates and carbon fiber as well which is a very nice option um sort of to in addition um, in addition to the carbon fiber seal kick plates you've also got carbon fiber mirrors as standard which is very nice very nice option to have i believe there's also some ppf that was installed standard on these cars as well from factory it's got ppf on the front so it's, i think from the mirrors and in effect from the a pillars forward the whole car is ppf standard I don't believe the rear of the car is PPF'd. Probably find that the rear arches have some PPF around it, um, which actually I don't think they do. 
commonly they do, but I don't think they have here on this car. Um, but the, the front of the car is PPF for stone chip protection and in effect to protect the car against being scratched at all when the paint is being, when the, when the car is being washed. So I've given you a bit of a walk around the car. See, I'm no expert on Scudder ears, so I've just given you some information there on what I know about the Scudder ear. Um, we've given you a walk around on the car. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it out on the road and give you a talk and drive and give you my, my appreciation of the car from the short amount of time that I've been able to drive it. And I'd just like to say again, Thanks very much to James for allowing us to borrow the car for, for a few hours to actually give it a re review for my channel. James has been a big help to the channel and it's very much appreciated. Thank you, James. So now you join us inside Scuderia. So I've got an interesting comparison to be able to make today because earlier today I drove a Challenge Scudari, a 360 Challenge Scudari. Also a very stripped out, would be race car for the road, similar to the Scudaria in that sort of format, or the, obviously the, the Scudaria being the 430 variant. First reactions and first, first, um, first thoughts, the Challenge Scudari is a lot more comfort oriented. I bet you never thought I'd say that um, at lower speeds. It's not harsh at all. Um, when you push on, in a challenge Stradale, that's when you really get the edge of the performance. It, it seems not docile, but very, but quite normal, if that's the right phrase to use, until you get to around six and a half thousand revs, and then you get everything in that last, in that last six and a half thousand to, to eight and a half thousand, that, in that last 2000 RPM range, before you hit the red line, it really, it really strikes and hits the performance note, really hits the peak, peak performance band. Now, with regards to the Scuderia, the Scuderia is a lot more of a refined car. When I say, when I, what, what I mean by refined, it's, it's a lot more. It's got a lot better poise on the road. I would say the steering on the on the Challenge Scuderia is quite light, whereas the Challenge, whereas the steering on the Scuderia is actually quite firm. It's got a good weighty feel to it. I would say you could feel more of the road for the steering on the Scuderia than you can on the Challenge Stradale. <laughs> With regards to performance, it's quite docile, you can drive it quite calmly, I'm now in 6th gear, I'm doing around 40 miles an hour, it's quite docile, quite calm, no issues whatsoever, um, good visibility all around, not too thick A-pillars, so you can see quite well around the front of the car. Now with regards to looking for a rear view mirror, looking at the back, you've got a about a, with regards to what I can see and um, my angle of view, I can see about two inches of useful rear view action going on behind the car, and the rest of it, all I can see is the engine. Now, it's, it's not a bad sight, the 4.3 litre, 502 brake horsepower engine, it's not a bad sight with all that carbon fibre and the beautiful carbon fibre plenum chambers, but with regards to seeing behind, it's, it's not got that great visibility. But well, that's what you get when you get a, a Scuderia. And I guess, and I would assume that a 430, all 430s are pretty much the same. Now when we start pushing on, as you can see there, the exhaust note is quite baritone in its sound. With regards to the switching of the note of the exhaust, it's very similar to a 458. With a 458, we, depending on which um, state you've got the Manatino in, the exhaust will change its note um, from, from a calm state to an open state um, within a small range of RPM. So typically it's around the 5,000 RPM when you're in sport mode, where, where the 458 will change its note. Um, in effect, the valves will open. On the Scudder rear, it's a similar sort of situation. You have a similar sort of valve system, it would seem, because you get that switch of a sound. At the moment, it's running the standard Scudder Air exhaust system. And we're just following behind a bus at the moment and it's, it's very calm. 
It's got a single clutch, as I've detailed earlier, thereby when you actually change gear, when you put go to a higher gear, so from fourth to fifth, say for example, then you you need to lift a little bit just to just to make it a little bit easier for the single plate clutch to actuate to actually engage the gear. Um, this is different to dual clutch systems. When you when you change down again, there's no need to lift a bit. You can you can just change down as you can hear, and it uh, it drops a cog without any any particular issues. Uh, no need to lift, etc. So it's, this is a very refined single plate clutch gearbox. It's a very refined gearbox, and as I detailed earlier this is the last of its kind so they really perfected the single plate clutch gearbox and um, then they moved on to the dual clutch system the dual clutch transmission in effect the DCT and um, when they moved across to the 458 <laughs> Looking around the cabin, it's a very nice place to be. Now the specification of this car is pretty much grey. And when I say grey, I mean grey. So that's grey paintwork, grey interior, grey seats, and grey contrast stitching. So the person who watched this car wasn't very in innovative. <laughs> it could be said he's not very innovative, but it is what it is, and it's a 430 Scuderia. It's a nice place to be inside the cabin, very comfortable. The, the, large, the large sized bucket seats are a good place to be, very supportive. I can feel it supporting around my kidneys very well. The actual space inside the car with regards to the footwell, plenty of room, no issues whatsoever. I'm six foot one and most of my length is in my legs as opposed to my body. So I have no problem stretching out in this car. In actual fact, I've got the seat a little bit forward. So, um, so yes, uh, not a problem whatsoever. So one of the benefits that you have in the Scuderia is the first implementation, as I mentioned earlier, of bumpy road mode. So let's switch bumpy road mode on. And it's uh, straight away you can feel it softened up the suspension quite a bit. you have to be careful with a single plate clutch is when you stop at traffic lights etc you it's best practice to actually put the car in neutral otherwise as I mentioned earlier you got you get a situation where the friction plate is engaged on the single plate clutch much like if you hold the hold the car on the clutch with a, a normal manual gearbox and a, with a manual hand shift with, with a manual gear shift Therefore, you've got to be careful you don't burn out the clutch by holding it on the clutch by keeping it in gear when you're at traffic lights. So, best practice, put the car in neutral when you're at traffic lights and then engage gear when you're ready to, to move along. Or indeed, when you're stopped, when the vehicle's stopped, just get into a habit of putting the car in neutral. Good example here, we stopped at traffic lights, put the car into neutral, then we have nowhere on the clutch. <laughs> As you can see here, I'm just driving away from the traffic lights and I'm just lifting slightly when I change gear just to make it a little, smooth, little bit of a smoother transition so you're not actually on power so there's not a vast amount of power and torque going through the gear selector shaft when you're actually selecting the gear and through to the clutch so you're not putting in again a lot of stress on the clutch system and it makes it easier for the gears to mesh when you actually change gear. Um, so it's a lot more, it's a lot smoother transition. Again, something you don't have to do with the new modern dual clutch systems. Open when you're pushing on a bit, 
it's um, it's, a, it's a sort of baritone sort of sound as well until you start pushing on and then it really sounds gets into sounding like an F1 car <laughs> Steering on the Scuderia is a lot different to the Challenge Stradale. The Challenge Stradale is quite light on the steering. You can definitely feel a lot more through the Scuderia steering than you can on the Challenge Stradale. And I would say you can feel a lot more than you can on the 458 as well. I would say that the four, I would say that the Scuderia steering is a lot more informative. You get a lot more feel. In addition, the Scuderia steering is also a lot firmer. It's not so loose and not so easily turnable, if that is, if that is indeed a phrase. If, in comparison to the 458, it's nowhere near as fast as the 458 steering. The 458 is a lot, a lot faster and almost a bit twitchy in its in its need to turn in very very quickly so you just have to touch the steering and it, will, and it wants to turn in on the 458 whereas the Scuderia is, is a lot more fluid um, less urgent with regards to turn in um, it's a lot more predictive um, and, and you could, could argue the point it's a lot better way to be it's a lot better design from that aspect the only downside of that is when you go to take a sharp turn right or a sharp turn left you do actually have to take your hands off the steering wheel or you have to move your hands through the steering wheel and um, threads the steering wheel through your hands as it were. You can't keep your hands permanently on the steering wheel because the, the steering isn't fast enough. You have to turn too much and you'd end up with your with your you'd end up with your with your shoulders dislocated if you if you try to keep hold of the steering wheel. So there is that with the 458 you can just turn the steering wheel pretty much in every predicament you can keep your hands at 10 to 2 and you wouldn't have to release your hands. With regards to the ergonomics of the cabin of the car, the, you've got a, a standard indicator stalk, which is, which is, I feel, a lot better than having the indicators on the, on the steering wheel. Although I must admit, it's taken me a bit of getting used to. I'm so used to now having the indicators on the actual steering wheel. It's actually become a, um, something I've had to get used to again, actually having the indicators on the, on the um, steering wheel, on the steering stalk. So that's very different from that aspect. Also, the, the window lift buttons were on the Challenge Stradale, they're on the centre console. On this, on the Scuderia, you've actually got the buttons on the, on the dashboard, lower on the dashboard, where you would normally have a stereo system fitted, uh, where you'd normally have a stereo head unit fitted. So that's, that's quite an interesting design. I've never seen um, the, the power window buttons installed in an area like that before, so that took a took quite a bit of finding. The dash is very similar to all Ferraris. Front and centre you've got the rev counter, pride of place. Here it's specced in yellow, now I think that's the standard option for a Scuderia um, in yellow and it, and it fits very well, there's no problem at all with the, with the rev counter being coloured yellow. It's a lovely contrast and, and, and um, is, is very much in place and in keeping with, with the, the normal Ferrari design. You've got the, the gauges on the left hand side, very informative gauges, and very clear to see to the left hand side of the steering wheel, <coughs> oil temperature water temperature and oil pressure obviously key information that you need to be able to see preferably at all times to the right hand side of the rev counter you have the speedo it's quite a large speedo and an analog speedo as well which is good to see as opposed to with the 458 they had screens either side of the rev counter and you've got an electronic speedometer which isn't my favorite i must admit i much prefer the analog speedometer
Spaghetti bouncing around the road, the 458, you, you tend to skip around the road a little bit at speed. Whereas in the Scuderia, it's very planted, it's, it's very solid, you can definitely feel the pedigree of the car as you're pushing on. Very nice indeed. Well played Ferrari. This car really wants you to push on and drive it fast. You can see it's very much designed to be a track car. Definitely this car comes onto its own when you push on. Just everything comes together, the steering, the chassis, and absolutely for sure the engine and the gearbox. It all is very much in tune when, once you start actually pushing on and making use of the chassis. When comparing the brakes on the Scuderia with the 458 and the Challenge Stradale, I would say the Challenge Stradale brakes bite a lot easier and have a have a lot of a, and, and have an initial harder bite. Uh, when I say harder bite, they actually grip the the rotors a lot a lot quicker, um, maybe more aggressively. The Scuderia, I would say, it has, has less of a uh, an initial bite, but it has a more of a progressive bite. With regards to the 458, my 458 spider brakes are, are shocking, I've got to admit, compared to my Bath even. Now, I think that's because they're actually partly glazed. They need a bit of um, tough love to actually get them, to get the glazing off them. The car's only a low mileage car and, uh, and it probably hasn't been driven hard enough. Therefore, the actual, the discs need a bit of a, have got a bit of a glaze on them, I think. But I would say that the, the 458 brakes Oh, you know, you really have to push hard on them and you have to really get them hot to be able to get them to really work well. In my mind, with my experience, I would say that the Scuderia brakes are in between the 458 and the Challenge Stradale um, with regards to bite. 458 the worst, um, four, the Scuderia being more progressive and the Challenge Stradale being more of a, a, a quick bite and a, a more quicker stopping power, if you like. we're not too far away now from our end destination so this is probably a good time to wrap up the video really love the car just want to say thank you very much again to James even though we've only had a few hours it's been absolutely phenomenal and it shows a great level of trust that James has got to um, to allow us to, to have his car for a few hours thank you James very much appreciated so if you like the video give it a thumbs up and please hit that like button if you're not subscribed then please think about subscribing plenty more great videos and great content to come thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video